Welcome. It's good to see everyone here. Uh, I'm Aaron Davis, the current president of, the, president of the Bloomington Rotary Club, and welcome to our weekly celebration of service. Hal Turner please, is going to come up and give the pledge and the reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. to Gmail. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Okay. Welcome to Gmail. Hello, this is Duke Energy. We're just reminding you that we failed to receive your last... Duke Energy here. We wanted to announce we're happy that you will soon be receiving new electricity better electricity. Hi, I'm your agent. Hello. Um, this is an important message. Urgent, urgent. Please open this message right now. Do you know that if we don't get money from you by midnight tomorrow night, life as you know it may cease to exist? That's true. There are people, those people over there, who don't want your way of life. They want a different way of life. And if we don't stop them right away, you're going to lose everything you hold near and dear. So please, write a check or click here to send us an immediate electronic payment. We need this urgently. By the way, if you'd like to unsubscribe, please click here. Click. <laughs> Sorry, 404, this page not found. <laughs> well, I'm worried. I'm worried by what I see and hear every day. I'm worried because I see that the manipulation of facts and truth today is becoming a fine art. A fine art where those with power, money, influence, or media control on any side of any issue can tell white lies, half-truths, or total fabrications. These are to spark our emotions. Large numbers of people react to these as if somebody shouted fire in a crowded theater, when in fact, if they took the time, they would find that there are no flames and there's very little smoke. Highly manipulated, low information, emotional voters like these are prized by both parties and by all groups who strive for political power. But this polarizes and weakens our country. Information travels at the speed of light. The truth sometimes seems to take a little longer. Are we now culturally in such a hurry that we're willing to sacrifice truth on the altar of speed and brevity? Finding the truth takes effort and time. We have to keep questioning what we hear, and we must continually work to verify the truth of what we hear. To quote Denzel Washington, if you don't follow the news, you're uninformed. If you do, you're misinformed. This fall will be the beginning of an exhausting year and a half of election fervor. It isn't our truth until we verify it and accept it in our own minds. 
the responsibility for verifying that truth is entirely ours. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. Um, I want to acknowledge today's greeter, Ron Barnes, photographer, Glenda Murray, Martha Foster, a Community Access Television Services, um, and uh, roundabout reporter, Bill Oates. And thank you again to our gracious hosts, food preparers, servers, and tech crew at Indiana Memorial Union and its catering services. Now, Sandy Keller will introduce the guests. And in the meantime, I'll introduce the birthdays. <clears throat> this week, Kim Gray <clears throat> on September 1st, Marilyn Wood, September 5th, Jim Shea, September 6th, and then on September 7th, John Diltz and Aaron Davis. So, good wishes to everyone with birthdays. This is a great presentation with a megaphone. I didn't bring mine, by the way. Would the following guests please stand when your name is called so that we could recognize you? A guest of Owen Johnson, Lisa Schubert Nowling. She's a, a pastor at First United Methodist Church. And no <laughs> And no surprise, Jim Bright has brought two guests with him today, Ernest Rollins of the Herald Times and also Melissa Starry. We have a guest of Trent Decker today, Clint Bow with RCV Roofing. And Jean Emery has brought a guest, Heather Bozart. She's a lender with German American Bank. <laughs> Welcome to our Rotary Club. If you would like to learn more about how to join Rotary after your meeting today, please out reach out to the people at your table and network with them. We would love you to have you be part of us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Um, so back to our Rotary family, we have membership anniversaries, Jerry Ellenwood, 49 years, Charlie Osborne, who couldn't make it today, at 27 years, and Dan Preston, who is on the other side of the pond, right Jim, uh, at nine years. Then. Our own Martha Wales was featured in the August Volunteer Spotlight for Community Kitchen. Our members do a whole lot of good in this community and in the world. Thank you. And a little update on our 2019-20 Global Grant Scholar, Alexandra Starry, who has a relative here. <laughs> uh, she's starting her second year of studies at the Hurdy School of Governance in Berlin. And our 2018-2019 Global Grant, Grant Scholar, Aubrey Cedar, uh, since returning from the UK in July, has been speaking about her work at Rotary Clubs all throughout our district. And she's always a big hit. And now, we have a presentation with Wonder Lab. Please, Ann Connors will... Uh, lead the charge here. And Ashley, you come on up too. Yeah, today we're very excited to present our $6,000 Rotary Grant to Wonder Lab for their new exhibit. And we're going to hear more in just a minute from Karen Jepson Ennis, the executive director. Um, as you know, each year our club uh, donates $3,000 to a grant opportunity from a local nonprofit. And the, the uh, Community Services Committee, which I'd love you guys and gals to stand up because you do such great work all year. If you're a member of the Community Services Committee, can you stand up? Yay! So we get 15 to 20 applications introduced by you all for local nonprofits. We select them based on 
the impact they have in the community, how closely aligned they are with Rotary's areas of, of focus. So we chose Wonder Labs, uh, and I always mix up the words. Come up here, Karen. Correct me on this. It's uh, science. science sprouts. Yeah, science pl sprouts place. Okay, oh. rolls right off your tongue. Okay, um, and Karen's going to say a few words. And what a real important part of the grant, because we got a three thousand dollar match from the district, is volunteer involvement. So Karen's going to mention how we all can be involved as greeters for the new lab space. You might have seen the banner outside Wonder Lab with the Rotary logo. Wonder Lab is really promoting our involvement, so um, she'll give information, and Natalie will do a sign up genius so we can start volunteering on October 5th, and we want to have, a, it's going to be fun for the family, and we want to get a lot of volunteers, and we report that back to the district so we can ask them for another match next year. So Karen, um, I guess we should pr present this first, I guess. Okay, I'm new at this. Okay, okay, okay. so here's the chat. <laughs> Check, which will be able to buy more stuff than that cardboard check. <laughs> okay. So. Um, Thank you. Anne said I could say a few words about this project, and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to tell you about this brand new exhibit space at Wonder Lab called Science Sprouts Place. There's a poster. I brought a bunch of posters that has all the details. If any of you would like to take one for your business, you'd be welcome. They're back um, on the desk with Natalie. But Science Sprouts Place is a brand new exhibit area specifically designed for infants and toddlers. That is uh, birth through age three and their adult caregivers. And this space aligns with a, um, a top organizational priority to provide more experiences for that age group. Basically, for the first time, we want to have specific activities to begin at the beginning with, uh, with learning. Um, the specific grant that Rotary, Rotary funded is for a special area in Science Sprouts Place called Sprouts Lab. And this is going to be located adjacent to the area. And it's going to provide sensory investigations for early preschoolers and will provide uh, a sink. Now, a sink in a museum is a pretty amazing thing. And what we're going to be able to do with it is chemistry and early STEM and physics and sensory explorations that are usually are just available at scheduled times. So what's going to be in Sprout's lab? What will children learn? Uh, what young children learn through these kind of experiences are fine motor skills, uh, cognitive development, social interactions, communication skills, and the very basics of chemistry, math, and science explorations. OK. Yeah, so to help open this space, which is going to open on Saturday, October 5th, we had uh, identified Rotary members could come and help as guides to help people select activities to do, organize the area, help with cleanup, and, and get, getting families oriented to the specific activities. So the days, the specific uh, shifts will be two people at, at a time for about a two-hour block of time. And it will start the uh, opening day, Saturday, October 5th. So there are several days that are available. Children can come and assist as long as they're 13 years old or older. And I'm going to give all of the days and details to Natalie so that will come out on the um, and the sign up genius, and all the details will be there. So, thank you so much for your support of this community project. It's very important to us. Great. 
Thank you, Karen, um, and Wonder Lab, and, uh, and thank you, our Community Services Committee, and Ann Connors, uh, doing a wonderful job leading it. Uh, not, to, not to leave our Rotary family, I just want to say, give a mention that Charlotte Zitlow is, is here with us today. For uh, Rotary Action updates, um, I don't have as many this week. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> um, the Rotary Centennial Playground at Ferguson Crestmont Boys and Girls Clubs, you have an invitation. Uh, it'll be dedicated September 25th at 5.30 p.m. Rotary Leadership Institute, I'm, I'm still looking for people to, to be interested in this October 26th uh, training. It's actually more fellowship. Um, if you have any interest, please, uh, please let me know. There will be a link in the uh, roundabout. Social media, we're uh, having a little bit of a communications meeting after the, uh, this <laughs> very quick one, after this meeting. So hang around if you're, if you're interested. We're going to be launching a page, a Facebook page, in addition to our Facebook group. <clears throat> okay, the Rotary Toast, honoring Carrie Curry, Friday, November 1st at Woolery Mill, 6 to 9 p.m. We do expect another sellout, so please you know, get your tickets uh, early. And Ryla, Rotary uh, Youth Leadership Award. Applications are being accepted now, if you have anyone. We do have, have somebody who's, uh, who's applied and, and going. So think about that, and I'd like to have Lauren give a little pitch for Ryla. Yeah, I'll just speak back, brief back here. Uh, Joy Harder and I have led Ryla for the past several years, I think it's five or so years, uh, at Bradford Woods. This year's Ryla is gonna be taking place October 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, high schoolers of all ages from anywhere basically in southern Indiana, including home homeschooled children as well. Uh, if anybody has a connection, that's the way these things happen is you as Rotarians or friends of Rotary say, hey, I think my son or daughter or a friend, son or friend, son or daughter might be interested in a leadership weekend. It's, it's a phenomenal weekend that is equally as enriching for those who volunteer, which leads me to my ask of if anybody wants to come out for an hour or an overnight, you're certainly welcome, just let Joy or I know. And Joy's gonna be having to step back a little bit due to her mother's health, so uh, we're gonna need some additional support from our, our club here and throughout the district. So I'll leave it there. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Lauren. And now, happy dollars for fellowship and fun. What are you happy about, Judy?
told me one day, they offer the price of the Without these components, I don't believe we can really engage very well with our fellow citizens. After spending some time vetting our speakers, I came to the conclusion that this is exactly the kind of people that we should be listening to. Their reasonable approach is very interesting to hear about. So let me introduce them. Don Bird, our blue, uh, and notice the color coordinated, set um, out in life to become a composer. He graduated from the Indiana University School of Music, ha um, having learned to write the kind of music no one wants to listen to. <laughs> that kind of music doesn't pay well, so when he started to learn something about composers in the late 60s, he changed career goals and got a job as a programmer writing software for music on the side. He eventually received a PhD in computer science, um, but spent um, many years in industry as a sound, uh, soundware engineer, software engineer, and entrepreneur before returning to academia to do research in information retrieval and music informatics. William Ellis, our red, uh, was born in Indianapolis and moved to Monroe County in 1999 to troubleshoot problems in a newly opened retail store. Since 2015, he has been chairman of the uh, Monroe County Republican Party, and this past July, he was elected to the town council in Ellisville his wife, Christina, works as chief deputy treasurer for the county, and he has two children. William and Don, please come up. Well, we were going to do an interpretive dance and piano thing, but Don said no, so. OK, I'm the one that vetoed it. I'll, I'll make a couple. Well, all right. But, Let's get the computer working first. You don't really have to worry about the screen yet, but we just want to make sure that, okay, we're good. I'm William, I'm William, this is Don. Okay, and I'll let you start because you started this. It's true, I did start this. Here, Don. Yeah, it's true. I did start this. Um, I had been looking for something like Better Angels for a long, just realizing. The uh, number one problem facing our country, I started to get involved with a, a uh, left-leaning organization 
But more and more, I thought, all right, that's not, you know, none of those uh, conventional problems that people think about as our biggest problem. The polarization is the real thing. Well, Better Angels strives to be equally red and blue at all levels, red being right-leaning, blue meaning left-leaning. It doesn't matter whether people are a member of a party or not. That's just uh, labels. So since I was obviously the blue, I needed to find a red partner. So um, not knowing a single conservative in Bloomington, despite all the years I've been here, I finally said, OK, I'll call the Republican Party chair and ask him to recommend someone. That was William, and to my amazement, he said, uh, I'd love to do it myself, and he's been as good as his word. And Don's call couldn't have come at a better time. And even being party chair, you can see the polarization is ripping this country apart. I had been meeting with some blues who are now part of Better Angels. We were doing what I'd call, you know, just sitting down over drinks, having a couple beers. I'm sorry I didn't bring beers for everybody today, but you'll have to deal with that and just listen to us. But uh, we found that we could connect as people. And that transcends politics, because too much of this is when you talk to someone that is on the quote unquote other side, you have this perception that everything they say is colored by their political beliefs. But when you get to know them personally, you find that's not the case with 99.9% .9 of the people. And I can say not the case to anybody I've met with Better Angels, because they really have personal reasons and feelings for why they are, and it's not the stereotypical reason. Yeah, I, can, I can only agree with that. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't not do this. People will thank me for doing this work, and I, I just can't. It's just, the need is just staring me in the face all the time, and I have the, just happen to be in a position where I can do it. Let's say something about, um, <clears throat> we have a pledge an informal pledge we try to follow. As individuals, try to understand the other side's point of view, even if we don't agree with it. In our community, engage those we disagree with, looking for ways for common ground to work together. And in politics, support principles that bring us together rather than divide us. And you can see that's very similar to what Rotarians believe, too. So it fits very well. The only thing I would say, I mean, pretty much every topic there are other points of view, except pineapple on pizza. That is an absolute. You cannot, OK, maybe I need to put my better angel wings on. And All right, maybe there, you like pineapple on pizza? It's OK. It's OK. Well, see, we found common ground. I don't like it at all. He thinks it's OK. But Close enough. Anyway. Close enough. But a lot of you are asking how we do this. It's right. more than just talking. We have actually uh, workshops that go through this, and Don's going to give you some examples of what the workshops are. But the first one is the, the big one. Go ahead. Big one, yes. Um, our flagship activity is the Red Blue, uh, Red Blue workshop, where we get an equal number, of just a handful of reds and a handful of blues together in a room with uh, trained moderators to keep things on course. Um, I think the best way to give you an idea about it is to show you this little video. Uh, the first one we did in Bloomington uh, a little over a year ago, NBC sent uh, 10 people to, I, I was, we, you know, to our surprise, to cover it. And they boiled it down and did a, did a terrific job of, um, of showing it in this MSNBC video. William, do you want to comment about your role in this? Well, I'd say let's just roll the tape and I'll comment after. Okay. All right? Yep. We also want to talk about the other story that we mentioned just before the break, which is about the divisions in this country. That's not a surprise to you. It shouldn't be. Since the presidential election, we've heard more and more people are getting more and more divided. We've seen a lot on this. We've seen both sides of the political aisle play the blame game. So how do we get past it? There's this nonprofit group out there called Better Angels that may have an answer. NBC's Rahema Ellis actually caught up with the group in Bloomington, Indiana. She's joining us now live from New York. So Rahema, how does this work? Is it realistic? It is, because in this case, they asked people to volunteer, and they did. They got 12 volunteers, six Republicans and six Democrats, who were willing to sit down and talk. They were guided by the Better Angels organizers, and participants are asked to listen and try to understand each other's side, not change minds. And we played like the fly on the wall and just observed. What often, Hallie, I have to tell you, it felt like an intensive, messy marriage counseling session that went on for seven long hours. We're here to 
seek understanding. The day began with both sides listing the negative stereotypes they think the other has about them. We felt the stereotypes for us are that we're racist, number one, stupid, uneducated, number two, fascist, three, anti-immigrant, four, or cold-hearted and uncaring, five. Unpatriotic, socialists, baby killers associated mainly with anti-religion, uh, anti-gun, and enabling takers. The group later gathered in a different room to talk about why their policies are best for the country. I think that the red side protects our freedom and our independence better by being less regulated by government. Are there any examples um, that come to mind? Or? Well, one would be the right to, to bear arms. I think that we have that right. I think that a lot of blue policies are designed to lift everybody up so that we can all be functioning well and contributing. They also voiced concerns they have about their own side. My side, I think, is far too willing to empower police and law enforcement. And that's, that's very dangerous, and frankly, I think it's unrepublican. I think sometimes blues tend to throw money at a problem. As a solution. After the exercise in self-evaluation, the group gathered to discuss what they had in common. I think it was the military-style guns. I don't know, other than law enforcement, while anybody would need to have that, you don't need, you know, an AK, whatever, to go shoot a deer. I get the sense of listening to the discussion of the, of the Reds, you know. Um, what we kept standing, coming out to me was, um, sense of a deep, deep belief in fairness. So who would like to share Chris, an action sure. step with the whole group? Sure. Dick? Verify my facts, question what I'm told by the people I hold in authority, uh, and don't lie. Do not rely on stereotypes to form an opinion. Be civil, don't argue, and put yourself in their shoes. At the end of the seven-hour workshop, the presumptions Republicans and Democrats had about each other provided an opening to move forward. Okay. I think it's hard to get things done as a country if we're just trying to better ourselves over the other group and, and win. We have to take our own responsibility for the divide. So Americans, Republicans and Democrats have got to come into rooms together and talk to each other? Uh, as scary as that sounds, yes. And they, if they agreed to do it, Hallie, the thing I found mm. most interesting is that they couldn't agree on the facts, but they pledged to try to access more unbiased news sources so that they could come to the truth, at least uh, a different truth than some of them now think that they think is true or is the right mm. thing. It's, um, it, was, it was fascinating to see them actually listening to one another yeah. and their willingness to accept the other person's opinion. news for you from back here in Washington about the political future of West. Don, okay. For the record, myself as Republican chairman made my national debut on MSNBC. So that was a bit that, you know, Tom reached across the aisle. But that pretty much sums up the Red Blue workshops because coming out of that, one of the things you're, you're forced to do is face those stereotypes people say against you and find the kernel of truth in there. That's one thing that they didn't cover there for time. But that was crucial because all stereotypes have a kernel of truth from everybody. And you have to address that, where that comes from. And I think in, you know, one of the things we've determined, we have alliance meetings monthly. Sometimes the words actually inflame the other side and do that. Like if, when they talked about baby killers, uh, when the people of the pro-life call those pro-choice baby killers, what conversation can happen after that? It shuts down conversations. And even little things you don't think of, when people just say, well, tax cuts for the rich. And for most Reds, all of a sudden the walls go up because they think conversation ends. So if we have an issue to discuss, the terminology that we use is extremely important. I'm not talking about just being politically correct. And I know those words of what I just said are uncomfortable. And I, what I recommend is, if there is discomfort, come to Better Angels because this is what we are designed to address, because we have to have these conversations if we're gonna heal as a country. Don. Yeah, um, apropos of that, I'd say, um, I think there, there are actually many groups working in the same direction as we are. 
But one way in which I think Better Angels is, is um, unusual, if not unique, is we are not trying to get people to compromise. We just want to, to uh, each side, people on one side, to understand the other. Keep your, keep your opinions as they are. Next work, the next workshops would be the skills. And Don, if you want to give an example of what's accomplished there. OK. Um, well, the skills workshop, skills workshop, we try to give people the skills to uh, talk about any difficult topic, although we concentrate on politics. Examples are all in politics. So one, uh, one exercise might be talking about um, immigration, in which um, there, there are, the, the, um, there are pre, pre, predefined talking points that people can use, because it's role playing, to avoid problems during the workshop. Um, when people pair off for the exercises, instead of having an actual red and an actual blue, there'll be a blue playing a red, a pairing off with a red, and vice versa. So uh, in a discussion, there might be just uh, a few minutes to talk about immigration and to try to get an idea of how a meaningful conversation could take place, really listening to the other person and showing you an understanding by paraphrasing their words. And that too often our mind actually paraphrases the words to the stereotypes, and that's what the skill workshop helps you do. It helps you reprogram that, so you're actually paraphrasing what they said, not what you think they said. The one I'm most excited about is fairly new for Better Angels, and we haven't had one public here yet, but we will. Goal is by year end, the Better Angels debates. And I'll try to make this quick, but when I read how the Better Angels debates were, I looked at them, and I was like, this is boring as heck. Because I'm used to the debates having clashes of ideas, and a winner and a loser. And Better Angels right off said, there's no winners and losers in this debate. It's for understanding. And I'm like, that sounds extremely boring. But let me ask you, how many people have watched a traditional debate? Not under, I'm not talking about understanding the candidate's position, but how many have actually come to a better understanding of an issue? Show of hands. Okay, there's some. Well, the Better Angels debate, after seeing one of them, I think every hand would go up. The first debate I actually was an observer with, and anybody can participate, I just didn't want to because I was kind of being negative about the thing. The question was, has criticism of America gone too far? I was amazed at the breadth of information that presented. Because one of the things we do, you're not arguing your side in the debate. You're presenting how you feel with that. And as much as we want to say logic wins the day, that's not really true. Most of our reactions are emotional. And what I found, that question did not break down yes or no on red and blue lines. Because both thought we need more criticism to make this country better. Both thought that criticism had gone too far and that our country was great to begin with and that maybe we should temper it. But the information they brought in, I came out with such a great understanding of this issue, one that I really hadn't given much thought to. And we have done that with our alliance meetings lately, just kind of get in practice. And what is amazing is the amount of heartfelt information people give. I have found information, or I have found understanding of issues that I thought I pretty much understood. It's like I never thought of it from that perspective. And the debate just used to have a resolution speaking the positive and negative. And anybody that goes can speak. If Ernest goes to cover for the press, and he wants to get up there and speak, he can. If Cax is there, thank you to everybody, they can speak. So we will be doing that, and I would love every one of you here to be there. You don't have to participate to observe, but this is, we want to show the public what better angels can do. Okay, um, we're gonna end in a minute, so there's time for hopefully a question or two. But um, uh, I just want to say one, one thing first though, about our name. The term Better Angels comes from uh, Abraham Lincoln's first inaugural address, in which he said, we are not enemies but friends. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. He called for the mystic chords of memory to be touched once again by the better angels of our nature. That was about a month before the Civil War broke out. I think we're um, pretty far apart these days, but hopefully we have more than a month to save off that. Closing for me, I'd say that term better angels, it probably means something different to everyone, but ultimately we decide what it means. Does better angels mean we defeat the other side and our side wins and we get what we want? Or does better angels mean we understand the other side and respect it 
and actually move forward and make a better, stronger country based on a difference of ideas like we've been doing from the get-go. And it's really up to us. We can't make it happen. The better angel is the vehicle where we try and give you an opportunity to make that happen. Because a lot's at stake, a lot. And one thing I've learned from every one of these workshops, the ones I've observed, the one I've been to, every single person, red and blue, has a deep love for this country and what it represents. And we don't want to lose it. It's just our, how we get there. But I think we can find an understanding over the one thing that this country is great and we need to protect it and protect our ideals. Do you have time? Yeah. Did, did you have time for the or? No, it's. Right now, we're hoping late October, maybe after the November municipal elections. Yes. At this Okay, right. Uh, good point. Okay, so um, we call chapters alliances. We can't, uh, we, legally we can't call them chapters. I won't go into that. But anyway, there are about 40 of them around the country right, right now. We were around the uh, 12th or 13th founded. Um, our goal, of course, is to be, to have chapters everywhere. Yes, yeah, even, I, I do know, I, I think it's outside of D.C. in one of the suburbs, but definitely I know a couple of people from there. And the way they're organized is, as Don put it, it has to be a red and a blue. At every level, there has to be a red and a blue. Because one, we can't have the perception it's either a blue or red organization. It's one thing a lot of these organizations suffer from. So it may be slower moving than some of them, but the reason being the foundation we have to build has to be equally red and blue because we want both sides to know they're there. So it starts by somebody saying, I want to be an alliance. Uh, actually, it's $12 a year yeah. um, to join Better Angels. And that breaks out to a dollar a month if anyone has math challenges. So, but it's at, at 12 a year. And Don's about to use this gavel to hit me. Uh, so <laughs> but uh, I, I think that that is a great question on how to, I think right now, the best thing is if you're in the Monroe County area, get involved with what we have. But over time, our goal is to have more, just like Rotary, to have more than one Better Angels chapter. But you don't want to break off until you've actually got the numbers, because that would be a, a negative. I think back there in the back. So I hear that you joined. So do you have a Yes, she wanted to know like how the structure of the officers and that are determined. Right now, Better Angels is fairly new, so we just have a leadership team. Um, and each Better Angels alliance is, is different. With us, we have uh, Don, myself, and then one other red, one other blue. Uh, and we're the leadership team because we started. But over time, that may change. Yeah, the, the, uh, the national organization mandates that there be red and blue co-chairs of each alliance, but that's it. Other than that, it's up to us. Well, the members do vote right now on debate topics that we're doing, um, and uh, they, we do have business meetings where that is where they vote on what kind of the direction of where we're going, and then the leadership team discusses that. I can't see us vetoing anything, but we just have to make sure it's, it doesn't conflict with Better Angels National or anything, the missions that we're doing. Okay. Um, let's see, who is next? Um, in the back? In the yeah, well, we'll work forward. Okay. How, how does one become a member? Well, um, the best way is to go to the website and uh, sign up, pay your, pay your $12 a year for it. And um, better, it's better-angels.org. Yeah, thank you. That confuses a lot of people. Yeah, that, that'd be the best way. And then go to the skills workshop. Then go, then go to Well, yeah, then the red, next Red Blue workshop is September 21st, and that would be great if, 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 pe if people here would uh, sign up for that. We still have vacancies. One more, okay, one more question. Karen. How does the Are you all trained by the I'm not, but William is, so why don't you say? I'm a, a debate. I've actually, for the, doing the debate chairs, you have to be trained for that. And there's a module you go through online, and then you take a test, and then there's an orientation. 
and then for each debate you do, you send notes in to the national one and they kind of evaluate how you're doing. So again, the topics actually fit with what Better Angels does. And now they're starting it. We didn't have it when we started, but uh, training for uh, co-chairs and coordinators. So it is still a new organization, so things are in flux, but things like that are, it's, it's, it's progressing where that's happening. Don and William will stick around afterwards for additional questions. Um, next week, we'll be back here in the IMU Frangipani Room on Tuesday, September 10th to hear Rich Jackson, editor of the Herald Times. Next week's greeter will be Art Olmick. Pledge and Reflection, Joy Harder. Introducing guests will be Jim Shea, and Roundabout reporter will be Bill Perkins. Uh, now, something to note, September 17th, the following week, we'll be meeting at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. So make a note of that. And the thought of the week, we seek peace knowing that peace is the ultimate climate of freedom. So we seek peace knowing that peace is the climate of freedom. President Dwight Eisenhower. So please rise and recite the four-way test, and I'll try not to say any more peas. Please. <laughs> of the things you think, say, and do, first, it's the truth, second, fair to all concerned, third, friendships, fourth, be beneficial to all concerned, and fifth, is it fun? <laughs> <laughs>